Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. We are here with warm and welcoming greetings and it is our great pleasure to be in your reality now that it is 2013 and the new era is upon us and so everything's going to change, yes? <laughs> Good. And we are willing to change. And that is very important and uh, some people are sometimes willing to change too much and they lose their sense of being rooted and finding traditions that are really valuable, what's called traditional wisdom. And of course, you know many who are so stuck and stubborn and uh, have an inability to be aware of the nuances of the moment and uh, they sometimes hold on too rigidly. And of course, when you do this, uh, well, you've all seen what happens in hurricanes, yes? Mm -hmm. Some of the more rigid structures get toppled, yes. And that's part of the recycling of existence. Everything has its season. And of course, this is the winter season. It is early January. And the exact date is number 13, yes? yes, yes. 1, 13, 13. Mm -hmm. There's a few interesting numbers for you. And uh, we are here for a cozy gathering in the, let's say, outskirts of uh, North Carolina, in the part of the world where cutting edge ideas are considered amongst the old traditions, not only of the South, but of long, long ago. You know, we'll meander this evening, or this afternoon, sorry, and uh, discuss a wide variety of situations, points of view. Know that uh, there is a point to all that we are covering and uh, working to assist you to understand. Sometimes people from various parts of the world visit other parts of the world and they encounter belief systems or trappings in time. Sometimes you marvel over this. For example, you may go to some areas that are still ensconced in fighting World War II in their minds. Do you understand? They've not evolved beyond it. In the South, uh, there are many people who are still fighting the Civil War. In the North, there are many people who are doing reenactments and still fighting the Revolutionary War. Do you understand? The point we are making is that <clears throat> you can chuckle over this and you can say, oh, look, in the Middle East, they are, they are rebattling even older timelines and wars, times uh, where giants and, and regular sized humans battled thousands and thousands of years ago. In the same areas perhaps today that uh, are in contention between Israel and Palestinians and uh, Hamas and Hezbollah and all the organizations that people have long lost track of their intricacies and meanings. Nonetheless, Wherever you look on earth, wherever you look, it is billions of years old. Yet you can drive down a street that is a new development and the houses are all freshly uh, constructed and the lawns perfectly manicured and you can think it's brand new, yes? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yet it, what you are looking at is billions of years old, what you are living with, what you are recycling and playing with is something very, very, very ancient. Now, there's lots of millions in a billion. And there's lots of speculation about the age, for example, of the Earth. And it is generally agreed upon uh, in what capacity? About 5 billion years or some such? 4.5 billion years? Anyone yeah. know? In, in that general range. It recently, <clears throat> your scientifics, as they develop new methodologies for reading isotopes and half-lives and quarter-lives and all these things and, and realizing that with the proper instrumentation 
an aria can be read and, uh, and if you understand the instrumentation, it can interpret for you what happened and, and how and when various ecological, geographical, uh, geophysical events occurred. The recent findings have pushed um, scientific and geological understanding of the Grand Canyon, for example, uh, to, let's say, ten times what they originally speculated. So at one point they thought it was uh, an erosion process that took place over seven billion years ago, yes? Now it is 70 billion years. What are these numbers? What is the, the, the civil war? Not even 200 years, yes? Mm -hmm. So what is really relevant in this context of when events occur on, on a slice of real estate that appears to be so ancient? How many stories are really layered here? In terms of linear time, many. In terms of simultaneous time, wow! Yes? Right. Now, let's not do anything with that right now. Let's just leave that hanging there as sort of a, a consideration, a sort of a, a part and parcel of what's going on in reality. One can call it, a, that category could be called a reinterpretation. You follow? No. We are a few weeks into, let's say, the new year and the new era. And we have, for the sake of convenience, we shall refer to the first portion of the new era as the time of the great changeover. And in terms of years, this would be delineated from approximately 2013 all the way through to 2027. Can you remember those years? Mm -hmm. 2013 to 2027. This is the change over time. Quite simply, in 2028, by 2028, there will be many things that have transpired, many, 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 cosmically, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, uh, scientifically. And the planetary movements in the next 15 years will compel some drastic changes. Earth will also be reverberating and responding to the galactic alignments, the recent galactic alignments, uh, f during the entire time of the changeover era, era. We will refer to it as the great changeover or the changeover in all future discussions, and so you will know we are talking about the beginning of the new era that really will kick in in about 2028. You are in the new era, but you are in the changeover portion of the new era. Think about that. What comes to mind when we name the next 15 years the time of the great changeover? Now, this great changeover, 15 years, includes what we call the first two phases of understanding energy of the post nano world. You with us? Yes. Can picture it? Mm -hmm. One of those phases is five years. You are in it now, 2013 through 2017. This is characterized by deceleration. You with us? Mm -hmm. Can you feel any deceleration? Oh, yes. yes. Can you notice that there's a certain nano corset that has been snapped and released? <laughs> yes. yes? Can, yes. Can, you, can you feel that? Yes. Even our vehicle said it was nano night when she started her body returning to normal, yes? Mm -hmm. How synchronistic, how coincidental, how remarkable, how 
spontaneously cooperative of the multiverse. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. But you can, you do feel that some of the nano pressure is gone. Mm -hmm. yes, yes, of course. I felt it Christmas night. Yeah. You felt it Christmas evening. Yeah. Yeah, I really thought it. Where and how did how did it how did you notice it? What how did it play itself? I it, was I went to bed that night and I just felt like this whole my body just totally relaxed. And Christmas could have had a little bit to do with it too, but I just I thought of all the things that had just transpired and my body went. Ah. This is Christmas night now. Yes. After you made it through Nano Day, Nano Night, uh, yeah. Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, Whew, yes. Mm -hmm. There was a big letting go. And again, just for your own recapitulation, we will ask you over the years to think back about the very end of the Nano, particularly December 1st to January 1st. That was when that big portal of energy you were in or you were approaching, the sun was approaching and then receding from the galactic center let's say sometimes events occur and it is not until the passage of time actually transpires that the significance of the events begins to take on a meaning sometimes a great meaning sometimes things occur that have no historical value until much, much later. When looked upon, they can be seen as the pivotal moment, the what we call the critical point of change. Do you understand this? And this is what the end of the nano signified, the arrival at the critical point of change. Now, in 2028, many, many things will be realigned and perhaps George or Nan or any other of you astrologically astute uh, thinkers uh, will talk about some of the planetary changes that, that, that you will have moved through and that really it is a time of a rebirth of energy. So we want you to consider now in the time of the deceleration, the, the great change over the slowdown that it's not as if the game's over and the show stopped and life is now ho-hum and it's back to long, boring Sunday afternoons with nothing to do. That's not it at all. You have brought with you all of the gifts, attributes, successes, failures, victories, achievements, all of it. It's all in your record and it is this, this, this that you carry with you as wisdom, ideally, as wisdom, as grounded wisdom. In the deceleration, you will notice that you are calmer, more centered, and more present in the moment. Yes? Yes. It's easier to be in the here and now. Watch for it. It's only a few weeks into it, but watch for it. This will grow. It will give you a satisfaction. In the garden, if you have a lovely plant, and you want to move it. If you are a wise gardener, you wait till the right season. If the season is right, you might wait till the moon is in the right sign. Then you would wait to the proper time of day. You would make certain that uh, the plant was well watered, and that the roots uh, uh, were well fortified. And you would cautiously and carefully move this plant. And perhaps it's not so big, it might just be a nice flowering plant or something a foot or two high. And you, with caution, move it and pat it in and do all the right things. And you set it up. But if you were to keep moving that plant all the time, what would happen? It would die. It would die. The nano moved a lot of energy around. And because it was methodically tempered and you built up to it, you built a tolerance for the ultimate optimum velocity, even though, wow, it was a kicker, you understand? Mm -hmm. And now your bodies are just 
reverberating from being uh, transplanted in many, many realities over and over again. Yet it was done with care and, and you survived it. Now in the new era, you're going to feel more rooted and less uprooted, more calm. Uh, you are going to see things with greater clarity. You are going to grow and blossom into mu something much greater. All that you learned in the nano now has a place, a, a purpose, a function, a reason for why it occurs to support you in this time of the great changeover. Younger people, children, teenagers, those in their 20s and 30s, they will adapt quite readily. Some of them will, let's say, think that all the things that are happening are quite normal. Of course, if you are an old soul in a young body, you will know that these things are not normal, that there is a, a great change over occurring, and that the demarcation between the nano and the new era is quite distinct, quite accentuated, and dramatically different. It may take a little while for the momentum of the new era to cloak itself in difference, just as if you time travel for a few moments here, back to 1987. Um, the weekend uh, that many call the pivotal time of the harmonic convergence. Nan, we know, was in labor. Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> he was in labor. Our vehicle was in conception. Right. We were born nine months later, mm -hmm. nine months after harmonic convergence. Nan, well, she was jumping the game there. <laughs> she had a, Nan herself had a nano baby, all right. and. Uh, so if you think about that time, that was a day. Some of you didn't even know the day existed. Some of you vaguely knew Nan was extraordinarily preoccupied. Oh, I was, I was on, I was so, I'm trying to think of the word that day. It was, I was very psyched up, very positive, uplifting. I, I was in a very good, very high state. And you knew it was harmonic convergence. Oh yeah. I knew that. I went on uh, for a walk on the beach. I said, oh, I'm going to give birth today. And everybody else was like, no, you're not. And I said, yes, I am. <laughs> I talked to the baby. Talk about abracadabras. Yeah. <laughs> you talked to... Uh, I talked to the baby and, and I said, oh, I know it's going to be today. And everybody didn't think it was going to be, but it was. Well, Nan's a Scorpio rising, and uh, uh, you are maybe tested in the next few years, certainly, but also all of you water signs or wherever you have Scorpio. A Scorpio can go to some very deep deaths, especially in that area of the body, you understand? Yeah. Uh, cancer, the natural psychic, Pisces, if you can stay grounded uh, and stay balanced in the Virgoian end, can be a wealth, a cascade of information coming through. But Pisces must learn to figure out self from the information. That's just why we say Pisces must be in Virgo. You follow this? grounded in, then it can tell the difference between self and all the other things that come around. So, Nan, that's a, that was a very good sign, and you made it through the nano, and you were here to celebrate the, the uh, nano day, nano night celebration, and you, like everyone else, have had many cards shuffled too, and have to play the hands you've created, and yet uh, optimism still stays with you and we encourage all of you to be super optimistic to put out some really really good energies but it is winter remember that mm -hmm. and so don't go pulling out your pogo stick and your jump ropes and start writing out hopscotch on the sidewalks like little kids you follow mm -hmm. this is a time of dreaming this is a time of restful creating even if you are in the hot environments there is a slowdown. You look at the sky, you see where the sun is. You watch the temperament of the days. 
and the temperament of the days works with you so that you can rest after the nano and slowly awaken in the time of spring with new ideas, new creations. And the more you take it easy these next two months, the easier it will be to really, really use the fire of the spring quarter. All right, there's a few other considerations we want to mention. You are and will be and will continue to be in quite a long window of weather extremes and these play out in weather wars, um, responses, uh, people's emotional responses, their volatility, their calmness, all of this affects the weather. And solar maximum and cosmic, uh, let's say fluctuating, ongoing fluctuating and unusual cosmic influences. The point we are making is that this window also may in cover the entirety of the time of the great changeover and even into the beginning of the phase three which starts the new era. Factor this into your considerations. Also factor in the utmost importance of communicating with nature and grounding all the changes into the earth in as gracious a way as you can. All right, so we've given you some things to think about. By now, you've probably got them all scrambled up and wondering <laughs> what are they, where are we going from here? But that's what we wanted, to plant some seeds and then to spontaneously talk about some of the challenges in terms of weather. The Mississippi is not doing so well, you know. They are having drought problems from last year's heat waves and and lack of precipitation and then the summer drought and so it's important because the Mississippi along with many other rivers around the world are your traveling arteries for shipping containers. Certainly these containers are on airplanes and ocean liners and things of this nature but they move inland basically and on rail and often on the waterways, on the barges. They are having problems, not only in the Mississippi, but in, in other places around the world where how people thought things were supposed to be, uh, they are not being that way. Some places have the extremes of droughts, others have the extremes, extremes of far too much precipitation. The changeover era will be pulling your chains on all of this, along with those who are manipulating weather until all of this is corralled and dealt with, which will occur in the latter part of phase two. In choosing where you're going to live, setting up your households and putting out your visions and intentions uh, for anchoring some new realities in the new era. Do not attempt to factor in everyone's prophecy. Do not affect, attempt to, to figure it all out and get every detail done. During the winter months, at the end, after the nano ends, and in the post-nano world, your duty is to dream, to be a bit in hibernation, to be creative, but quietly creative, not dynamically creative. To give your body the opportunity to adjust, to allow galactic information to continue to be downloaded. You are in transition. And so it would be most natural to respond in this capacity. Your vovum, your verve, your fire, your dynamism, your new visions, your everything, believe us, will really be stirred up prior to the equinox and from there on. Gift yourself with this opportunity, please. All right? Mm -hmm. And that goes for all of you out there in mystery land, even though you will be hearing this, uh, this directive uh, later than uh, the homelanders. However, 
Mr. Landers often write in and say they tune in to when the classes are being delivered uh, long before they listen to them. So that's a good sign. So let's move into discussion, questions, commentary, stories, um, visions, recapitulations, compliments, anything you want to play with in, in, in this afternoon's discussion. This is Sue. Yes, Sue, welcome. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> the, the people who do the war reenactments. Yes. And um, when they leave this time period, die. They do have fun doing this, you know. They do have fun doing it. it it's part of it. And for some of them, it's part of the healing that needs to take place around that particular war. It could be applied to any war. Or in any, exactly. And um, so when they leave, say, this time that they're in, can they go back and forth between and get stuck like in a pattern? Like say, um, they're reenacting the Civil War here, but they leave the body and they decide to come back during the actual Civil War. Well, that's a good thinking process. Let's examine this from many angles. But first we'll talk about the linear mind. You know, the nano really helped disengage the clamp, the trap, the control that the that linear thinking has placed on a large number of humans. And that's a good sign. And it frees you to be more multidimensional in your perspectives. Nonetheless, the linear mind still wants to think of it as an either-or situation and it's when we are talking about how things work there are a wide variety of blossoming possibilities so for example a person may be a legitimate 1863 participant in the Civil War How's that? On, on, on location. They die. And perhaps traumatically, shockingly, painfully. And they have to cope with being out of the body. Their beliefs at the time of what they think death is. Am I dead? Where am I? How did I die will be many the recollection, how did this happen? Whenever you have a shock, you want to keep saying, how did it happen? How did it happen? How, 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 how? That's part of it, what happened outside the body. Depends on whether family members came to meet the person. The person could be still wandering the battlefield. That's one way. Then they could incarnate along the lines of time into an era hundred years, two hundred, hundred years, hundred and fifty years later, where reenactments were le legitimately and professionally and quite passionately played out. Understand that after a war from 1865-1866 onwards, the war was still being reenacted because people were playing it in their minds. And, and, and some of them were talking about it. However, by 1920, most of the people were long gone, you follow? Mm -hmm. And so then, then it would be easier to reenact a painful experience, to incarnate and to reenact it outside the self. It, then why would the reenactments take place? Could be someone stuck? could be just like people who graduate from college and they still wear college t-shirts and cheer for the team and never move on. You follow? Mm -hmm. Lots of those, otherwise you wouldn't have so many college football and basketball fans and such. We know that pushes big buttons, but it is really the inability to move on. Now, sometimes there can be a person, for example, that attends a reenactment and they say wow they are 10 years old it's 1955 
and they are seeing it. Let's make it 1985. They are 10 years old and they are attending this reenactment. And they are learning still. And they learn about the Civil War. And, and from that life, after that life is finished, they may decide to incarnate into the Civil War era to help prevent it or to be there to fight it in real reality. Now, we just gave you a, many examples of how and why the participants would engage in creating energy to produce this, this sort of thing. It's, it's like a, a theatrical drama that is ongoing. Respond to it, Sue? Well, th it, it makes me think that perhaps it would be a way for a person like the one scenario that you said that they're in shock of how they died during it but through the reenactment they could figure out perhaps more of what happened yes you know, and yes. they would be able then to move on yes uh, yes and they could could uh, actually be conjuring the feeling of being with their comrades that they are wandering the fields with, you understand? Mm -hmm. The lost comrades wandering the field. Then, and then another aspect of self uh, born and, and participates in the reenactments. And here's the thing about the reenactments. What is the gift of the reenactment? Who knows? You don't have to die. Right. Yes, you don't have to die. You don't have to die. And, and more than that, it also shows those who are reenacting and are dead and are helping the dead get on that you don't die. Oh, interesting. Exactly. Right. Yeah. You with us on that? Yes. Mm -hmm. So that uh, in the reenactment, you don't have to die, but it's really showing that you don't die. Mm -hmm. And that you can can free yourself from thinking that you are dead on the battlefield because you are it was a dead body, but again, shocking, traumatic, sudden death can trap spirits who don't know what happened to them. You follow? Mm -hmm. Now today, in today's world, you have lots of people from, from shamans to indigenous practitioners to all manner of new ages and, and you know, sweepers and cleaners and, and psychic people. They know how to clean up an area and help those who want to go. And during the course of the nano, there were many people whose work, they were guided to do work, to go to areas where there was great trauma, especially in Europe, especially what happened to the Jews in Europe. And there were people who went and prayed and cleaned and lit candles and planted crystals and, and the actions you do in one reality even though they can feel separate and isolated and, and futile sometimes or even silly, they are also enactments. They are, they are indicators symbolically that you want to move energy. You follow this? Mm -hmm. Yes, you know, Peace, that's very good because sometimes I have laughed at the reenactment people and thought, oh, there they go again, there they go again. However, I've got a new view on it now because as they're doing Good. that, I realize our higher selves, I have to be really happy that we're doing this because we're making all these other connections. And then, so it's we're, very, we're making a better connection with our higher self, too. It's very, very multidimensional. Yeah. Now, take that thought and expand it. Expand it. Our vehicle asked you when she was playing the gong to picture a counterclockwise energy spinning around you in your body and to picture clockwise energy coming from the cosmos and then meeting above your head and creating a big plane, like the galactic plane, you understand? Mm -hmm. And so, so we are feeding you with ideas to put into, let's say, use the galactic plane to reseed the new era with an expansion of consciousness. Now, in reflection, you may believe that you were expanding your consciousness all through the nano. Yes? Mm -hmm. And 
even the last year you were doing your best running that last mile of the marathon but we'll tell you this you were so sped up and there was so much going on and, and you were keeping with it but now the energy is different and thoughts are easier to expand and have seeded and settle in and grow in one place into something bigger. You follow? Mm -hmm. This is a good sign. What else can you see in a multi-dimensional capacity? Well, can I add something? Certainly. It kind of goes along with, with Sue's in a way, Sue's question. You talked about the, the layers of stories and, you know, that the earth carries. And it reminded me of something I read in an energy medicine book, I believe it was Donna Eden, where she talked about working with, with her clients and she could go into the individual, you know, chakras. And she, I found it fascinating because she was able to go through layers of, you know, whatever, whatever the chakra it was she was working with, there would be layer upon layer of issues to deal with stories and stories yeah. stories yes. and then she would pull out the most appropriate you know for the person and and bring that to them to their attention to heal now it was a wonderful description of a talent a most necessarily talent an energy talent now here's the thing about energy and the new era You have just completed a 5,125 year cycle of development. And we've talked about it and explained to you that the nano occupied the last 25 years of that time frame. And that time frame was a certain, had certain protocols, you know, certain lessons, certain agreements, certain things that, that, that were, uh, let's say, part of the fashion it's a good word part of the fashion even though it was a long era and you feel that you had little in common with the people from the beginning of the era which would be the rise of the sumerian and egyptian cultures but perhaps there's more than you can recollect in the new era everything is different so the tools that you will utilize to help move energy and understand people's stories may not be the same wrench or screwdriver or, or issue of hammer that everyone used in terms of tools. Do you follow? Mm -hmm. In the new era, it, it is about energy and the changeover period, 15 years, again 2013 through 2027, it can be very confusing because part of the, the trickle over wants to be in linear and people will want to have protocols and lists and all kinds of things. But the, the age and the, the, what you are preparing for is recognizing unique talents. And there are quite a few people who have embodied and exemplified their own way of helping people heal and move energy. What you will see in the changeover is a bingo light bulb going off, that's part of the galactic energy, of helping more and more people come to the recognition that every person has talents to help others heal. Take this in. What the linear model wanted to do is to say, ah, I too can be a brain surgeon. Well, let me study with the best brain surgeon and watch every technique he or she has. You follow? Mm -hmm. In the new era, you are not going to mimic other people's techniques. The energy is there. It works through people, through their chakras, through their soul intention, through necessity, through agreement. And so what you will see is an awakening of more and more very, very um, compassionately devoted, talented people who will 
be able to read the body in their own methodology, bring up what is needed, and help heal. So it's not like a chess or checkers game. There's no protocol except intentionality. And we are saying, each one of you in this room could, during the changeover era, activate abilities, develop something completely brand new that you are extraordinarily gifted and talented with, and you open a chapter of life that is based on being appreciated and valued and giving to people what is needed to help them boost their health and their vitality or in non-logical, non-linear ways. Because this happens because the force of the cosmos and the goodness of being wants to play itself out. So the Donna Edens and all the such people, known and unknown, who do such work, they are going to multiply. As you have the parable of Christ multiplying, the, uh, Jesus multiplying the, the fish and the loaves of bread to feed the masses, yes? Yes. That's an interesting story, is it not? Yes. It is. Can you understand that out of necessity, uh, uh, that, that there will arise from many of the real nano writers, the dedicated who really worked with energy, your next phase is to accept. Yes. To accept that you too, it, it, because it is an acceptance that is very humble and humility. It's, it's with humility mm -hmm. that you recognize I too have these capabilities. So the new wave is going to awaken. Please. Use this lady for inspiration. And there are so many techniques that you will be marveled over people's stories as how they help others heal. Please continue. And, and just what you're saying, and, and uh, you know, and I, I want it, I am humble about it because I, I have to say, I have been feeling that and experiencing that and realizing that in the past six months to a year, and it. And I realized, I said, you would talk about that 20 years ago, and it just wasn't there, but now it's right there, and we get it, and we feel it. And I think everyone in this room realizes they, they will have their own special talent, too. Because you've always said there's never going to be enough healers to heal all the people. Exactly. And exactly. we're all going to create something unique. And now we would like to extend that inclusion to our long-term mystery landers. Some of you have been tape landers and travelers and workshoppers and, and, and now you are CD landers and we lump you all into the unknown dedicated mystery landers who are Pleiadian players. And of course you've explored a multitude perhaps of other considerations. And the bottom line is that the narrow is over, yes. But this is the critical point of change. And from now forward, a whole new agenda, a new energy, a new purpose will be played out. You are not worn out or finished, even if you are 99 or 109. <laughs> if you've made it this far, guess what? Vavum! There's more to do. And so generate that excitement, but not too much. Again, it's winter. We don't want you going out there rising up into hot air balloons uh, this afternoon. You follow? Uh -huh. but, but as we said, consider it, all of you, that you are now going to enter a new phase of your healing, of your purpose, because and the energy will support you. This is George. Yes, George. Um, I just want to share a, a story of something that happened. It's the only time I've ever been involved really in a reenactment. <laughs> oh, you've done a reenactment. I, I was involved in a reenactment one time, and, uh, and it was right across the pond. H historical. <laughs> historical reenactment of medieval times. It was a medieval gathering. And um, because of just who I had gone with, um, this person was very involved with the people who were playing the role of king and queen and the court. So I was 
you know. Was it any issues. king or queen or was just? A Spanish king. I don't remember his Spanish. name. So it was literally a historical reenactment of a timeline. Of a particular timeline. Yes. Right. And um, so what happened was is that I didn't really, I couldn't really find a, an exact role for me. And so, do you know what year they were reenacting? 1500s or well, something? Well, they such? always said it was between, they, they never gave a specific year. What they always did was in a general time period between 1500 and 1650, you know, somewhere in there. Right. Okay. Um, but in this particular case, uh, they couldn't find an exact role for me because I was a guest, and so they put me in the in the royal court that was observing the jousting. Oh, the they could. They were recognizing right away that you were a head diviner and knew right where to put you. Well, you've they, always been a consultant, George. <laughs> well, what they kind of did instead, though, was they put me in sort of a role like almost like a food taster. <laughs> <laughs> ah, well, that means that you would be poisoned first. <laughs> so they didn't. So they were really. You were a throwaway. Do you understand? And, oh, yes. <laughs> That's what you yes, call that—a throwaway. Exactly. I was That's, a throwaway. Yes, the very bottom of the chain. When you are the food okay. taster, the, the the glory is you get. <laughs> the glory is if you go out. So what? Because you have eaten like a king. Do you understand? Exactly. And you never would have achieved it otherwise. And, and so every day is a victory. Every meal is a victory. Every Do you life, understand? Every, day of life. every moment. Every moment that your guts are, are, are together and your mind is stable. It is a, it is a very, very um, highly driven life that is really revving up the endocrine system. So that was an interesting so, so crossover. What was is that I didn't really realize I'd been put in that role, but I just kept shoveling food my way. And you did taste it all. And I would taste it. And so the the drama that was enact, being enacted on the field was getting very interesting. And Jousting and things jousting, of this those nature. Those kinds of things. And I, and I picked up an apple, beautiful, big yellow apples. And I picked up an apple um, and I was eating the apple and it was fall and all of a sudden, I felt a sharp pain in my throat, an extremely sharp pain. Oh dear, did you eat B? I ate a, a yellow jacket, yes. Oh dear. And it stung me inside my throat. So, George. What, what happened? George. Oh, I know. Here's what happened, though. In, instead of being dragged off, <laughs> you know, being thrown in the heap, <sighs> the king, the queen, the whole court, Everyone rushed to help me. They showed concern. They showed concern. Uh, a person who really knew nothing about medicine came and worked with me and had some some kind of uh, whatever it is that you give for you have allergic reactions. I don't know the name. Benadryl. Of it. Benadryl. Um, but also did a healing on me and you know all this. So it was an example of what you were just saying that that people rallied around, but what I never had seen before until you just started talking about it was, is I thought I lived and so I survived it and so I didn't have to die, but it also gave the king and the queen and the people in the court who normally would have thrown them out, mm. you know, gotten rid of them, a chance to express compassion, concern, mm -hmm. you know, so it was kind of like a healing for them because they just didn't look the other way and, you know. I was, pers I was respected and allowed to be supported and live, even though I was a throwaway. So there's another example of multidimensionality in full dress action. <laughs> in full dress. Indeed. And the nano really pushed the multidimensional understanding to the forefront of human consciousness. Now, most people, if you said this to them, uh, let's say we put a headline on the newspaper, the local newspaper says, uh, uh, 1987 through 2012, multidimensional years. What would people think? They would, would they just pass it by? It would, be, it would be nothing to them. Yet think about the movies, the books, the stories, the reenactments. 
the realizations. Multidimensionality was, was, was a major theme of many, many people's experiences. Even when they attend those college football and basketball games. When they put those little ears on their heads or their flags on their cars, they are retreating into another timeline, do you understand? Mm -hmm. And you all do this. You Sometimes you go to timelines because um, there's a shock and a trauma and that even though part of you can see, I'm okay, another part is still engaged in how, why did I die, what was the purpose. So the cleanup can be long and it can be many degrees of cleanup, many degrees of, of healing and wellness and alleviation. Sometimes when you are ill, you can be very sick one day and then the next day or two you are back to normal. You follow this? Mm -hmm. Sometimes, uh, like our vehicle, who has, let's say, had her illness uh, with her intestines uh, for, for almost two months, uh, the healing was, uh, let's say, a longer, slower process. In other words, not two days of sick and then suddenly you are well. Some people have written our vehicle letters and told her stories uh, during her uh, uh, inclement time and they have been ill for years and they continue to, to attempt to figure out what's wrong, what, what is, why is my body not working. Understand that every person's psyche deeply affects the functioning uh, of the body on a subatomic level, atomic level, a cellular level, molecular, and then into the organs and, and the entire process. And your core beliefs, which you most take for granted, and they are often just obvious proclamations. Well, I never did that great in school, so I'm not that smart. Oh, I was the head of my class, so I know everything. Oh, my folks have plenty of money, so it doesn't make any difference. I can spend whatever I want. Oh, uh, we've never had much, and I, I, we will never have much. We always have to be very, very, very careful. I've always been well, and I will continue to be well. Well, if I have to feel like this, I don't want to live anymore. It's either get well or else. These are all statements of beliefs, do you understand? Mm -hmm. And your body responds on a cellular level and vibrates to your song. Our vehicle's song was quite clear. She said, I'm not living like this, either get well or get out. Mm. Not exactly, but you heard versions of it, yes? Mm -hmm. I'm not going to live with this kind, of, uh, this kind of discomfort. Something is happening, it's temporary, it's going to fix itself. I'm getting back to normal. And some people do not think health is normal. Good health is normal. But you have so many people who, who carry poor health with them for so long and, and don't allow themselves to change and just carry not feeling good around that they think not feeling good is normal. You, you with us? Yes. yes. Good. We're glad to know that. <laughs> glad to know that because in the new era if you can understand beliefs, then you can understand how people get themselves into conundrums. And, and sometimes any conundrum that you get yourself into physically, mentally, spiritually, and emotionally, ooh, you start to unravel it. You might find a thread. You might find a little fortune cookie note that says, this is about. You follow? And that's the conscious mind that says, what's this about? Can I just get a cookie on it? Uh, can I get a reading? But multidimensionally, there are answers that you may not find for years because events have not transpired that are connected to events that in, in the present have no meaning. Do you understand this? Uh -huh. So, for example, things that uh, befuddle you now, or the, that you are, why did this happen, where did this come from? We always say to you, do your best. No, say to yourself, I know this is about something, it will get better, I will change. And then, and then support what needs to be supported and let the story offer its richness in its own time. Because the story will continue to evolve. And there are those who can look at 
a chakra, let's say. Let's go back to looking at chakras. And it's a wonderful way if you can develop a chakra talent by using sight, sound, color, flowers. And if you can picture the chakras, like, like each one portraying and different people, a color, of course, the standard color, that's where you can be standard red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet, etc. But it, 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 here's a talent. You are looking at someone and you are saying, all right, they are, let's look at their chakras and see if they are spinning, open, grounded, cleaned up. And a way of looking may be to look at a batch of flowers. And the flowers that are supposed to be red may be red, but they may be all sort of dried up and shriveled, do you understand? Mm -hmm. Or wilted, you follow? Mm -hmm. yes. And so the person may have to push back the wilted flowers and see what's going on here. And then a story may come out. A an energy, a sound may come out. A creature may jump out. The point we are making is that as multidimensional beings who are ever blossoming, ever changing, interacting backward and forward in time, your stories keep evolving. So the protocols that worked in, in the 5,125 year section of the Mayan long count calendar, they chose those dates and they didn't start with the date in 3,100 and something uh, uh, before the Christian, before the current era and say, oh, here's the beginning. They weren't around then. They formulated the calendar by working backwards. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> they calculated when the alignment would occur with the galactic center. You don't start calendars backwards, do you? No. Maybe you will. Maybe. Right from an animal. Yes. <laughs> yes. Make room for all kinds of, of very interesting and, and sweet phenomena and, 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 and delicious, mind expanding sort of reverberations. So now, they work backward, but they weren't at the end either. They were in the big middle, you follow? Mm -hmm. They were about 2,000 years into it, or let's say 3,000 years into the cycle. So about 2,000 years ago, they come up with this idea that uh, in 2012, a galactic plane and the cross of the galaxy and the sun and then the bulge and all these things are going to line up. All right, and there's big, big juju there, big juice, big creativity, big pregnancy, big birth. These are some of their concepts. So from there now, they, they decide that the era really begins 3,000 years before their now, rather than at their now. You understand? Mm -hmm. So, and as we said, it resonates with, in terms of historical reenactments or characters, it would be Mesopotamian era and the rise of the Egyptian era. Both, of course, influenced by what? Celestial visitors. Mm -hmm. But also understand that at that point in time, even though to you it seems deep antiquity, and many of you have been, well, we doubt too many of you have been to Mesopotamia, at least not in this physical reality, you visit in your dreams, but you certainly, many of you have been to the Middle East and Egypt, or you've seen pictures, you've been to movies, so you can immerse there. And it seems like a long, long time ago when the, when the, the, the limestone uh, temples were built, and the carvings, and the statues, and the reverberations, the incense, all of it. But understand that at that time, those were the latter days of the visitors. You understand this? Uh -huh. That some of the bigger, deeper, hierarchy had been coming to the planet for hundreds of thousands of years prior to 5,125 years ago. You're really working your, your, uh, your mind with numbers and time this afternoon. We are, you're, we are jumping you around because when you jump around like this, it strengthens your nervous system. And you are going to need a stronger and stronger and stronger nervous system in the new era. Who has a comment or question? A piece, this is Steve. Yes, Steve. 
Welcome. Well, what I have a comment about multidimensionality. All right, speak up a bit, please. Sure. Um, what really gets my mind going is the thought that I could actually go visit my own grave, but at the same time I could be walking down the street in that same town or something and bump into myself that's in that timeline. If you go into that timeline, from oh, you're talking into a... What so you, I could visit like a grave site of a previous life, right? And I think in linear time in that sense, right? So, so in other words, you could go to the Oakwood Cemetery, right? which, which has all kinds of, of people that have been around for many hundreds of years. And you could literally uh, visit your gravesite. Mm -hmm. And we'll say this to you, Steve, that when we've taken people on mm -hmm. our travels and on our journeys into other countries, many of them have visited their site of birth and demise, and some of them their gravesite, and some of them their tombs. Please continue. And then at the same time, so that in a linear fashion, because obviously that body would be underground, but at the same time, you know, presume that I had lived in that same area in that other lifetime, but in a multidimensional sense, I, I'm still alive. So I could be walking down that same town, the, down the downtown area, and actually bump into myself. If you could switch timelines. If I could, yeah. Actually, you could be walking down the street and bump into someone and that someone would be in this now and you say oh sorry excuse me but that someone is also you bumping into you do you follow this right. and so would that person really be a person they could be or they could be a shadow uh projection for a few moments of a version of you disguised or, or being projected in modern time uh, and you have the bump and then what would all of this signify first of all if steve was plotting and calculating all this out that would be coming from a scientific perspective and science wants to fight all these things because they can't control the, the multiverse and so science is about tested situations do you follow this yes. and, and they have their own area but they cannot interpret the entirety of the multiverse and they are not good in multidimensionality because they rely on instrumentation and repetition and again healing techniques multidimensionality it is like flowers blossoming out of nowhere you can't control the garden you can plant everything where you want but does it grow the way you picture it no. ever no <laughs> do you understand mm -hmm. so do you understand the scientists frustration with explore, exploring multidimensionality mm -hmm. so so what this says is that multidimensionality is alive it is it is coordinated it is it wants to work in cooperation by playfully and humorously bringing parts of itself together and keeping other parts oblivious well, well, other parts get a good laugh. Do you follow? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Now, there is and there has been a push throughout the nano by those beings you would call globalists, New World Order, Luminots, whatever. Illuminats would be a better word. And they want to really really clamp down on your freedom your spirit and they want everyone to live in fear basically this is what all the shootings are about all the wars this is what the media manipulations are all about generating fear and because let's say joy cannot be measured by instrumentation and the multiverse cooperation cannot really be tracked uh, let's say it is difficult uh, to convince society that the multiverse can be very friendly. If you look and live under the shadow of the dark forces that rule the mountain behind you, then those shadows will forever be encroaching your freedom to explore the plane. But that is simply a belief system. 
and that is the way society has been manipulated. The multiverse is friendly. Yes, stuff happens, you know that. But when was the last time the multiverse severely bit you and mauled you and destroyed you? It can smack you around a bit, our vehicle knows that. You all know it. But smacking around a little bit is very different than destroying your energy fields and your lives. And the multiverse does not seek out to do that. It seeks to connect you. It seeks to bring love, to bring joy, to bring healing, to take you onto, into uh, deep journeys. And those journeys involve activating learning and, and being looking at things, whether it is a furnace or a hot water or the foundation or, or whatever it is that you have to learn about. But then you become knowledgeable. When you solve things, you move the energy and you feel good, yes? Yes. And you want to feel good. And so sometimes you feel ungood so that you can really appreciate feeling good. You follow this? Oh, yes. yes. Good, good. <clears throat> Who has a question, a comment? Or back to Steve this or Nan. Man. Yes. Um, I'm kind of, in, in, in this conversation we've been having, I've, I've thought a lot about that. Um, <clears throat> situation that took place up at Sandy Hook in, Co in Connecticut Connecticut and um, it's triggered a lot of stuff obviously especially in this country um, and in fact last week there was a, a teacher not a teacher it was Alex Jones who spoke mm -hmm. I, he was on um, I believe a TV show right <clears throat> where he um, mm -hmm. He's questioning what really took place up there, and of course, um, that's triggering more stuff in people. But but the big thing that's come out of it in this country is, it's like the the gun, the people that love the guns are, they're. It's like they've hit. I, I, I can't think of the word to describe it. It's it's frenetic. It's. Uh, what is the word if somebody goes to extremes? A fanatic. The fanaticism yes. has reached such a crescendo in that particular thing. And in fact, some of the states are saying, oh, yes, we're going to train uh, teachers or we're going to arm teachers or we're going to do this. So there are some people, some places that are reacting that way. Think of this then. Uh -huh. Throughout last year, we talked about splitting of the worlds, which we've been talking about for a few decades. Right. And last year we talked about unifying events that could happen near the end of the nano. Mm -hmm. Now, unifying events <clears throat> can also be splitting events. Unifying two opposite splits, you follow? Right. In this capacity, you have a splitting of the worlds and people really unifying in their split. And, and this event that, that these children took on, and, and it seems to us, Karen said that someone said that many of these children's bodies had, uh, uh, they were riddled, riddled with bullets. So it was very gory, very, very traumatic bloodbath scene. And some of them were, bodies were very much destroyed as we read the energy. So shocking on that level. And of course that goes out and reverberates and reverberates. And this polarization, uh, this fanaticism of, of those who insist that they have to have guns. And it, here is a story, it is an, a, a reasonable point from a certain point of view. Someone says the teachers rushed out and they use their bodies and their arms to shield the children. Wouldn't it be better if they rushed out and had a gun and, and shot the person rather than sacrificing themselves? That's, that's, definitely, <laughs> that's definitely an attitude in the country. <laughs> well, let's say it depends on your belief system. Right. But if you are a believer in guns, and what's happened is you have peace nicks and gun nicks. Uh -huh sharing the same prob. You follow this? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You understand this? Yeah. And from 
from the 60s onward there was a, a definite uh, leveraged agenda to create through the Beatles and the Stones and rock and roll a, 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 a sort of hippie flower children culture. It was all social and psychological experimentation. And certainly at, during those years, Uranus Pluto were conjunct, so something was bound to occur. You understand? Mm -hmm. Sometimes you give the the Illuminates too much power. We're going to call them that. They actually <laughs> like good. that term. Yeah. <laughs> we won't write it, but just in casual talk, we'll call them the Illuminates. And so, and so, some someone took on the fulfillment of what it would be like to bring Uranus and Pluto together to create radical change. And even though they leverage everything and used all manner of psychological warfare and manipulation and you all are manipulated in ways you don't understand but you still have the autonomy that many many people do not even though you are subjected to all this you can you can recognize it and move beyond it so you are in sort of the same era now and and to recapitulate what we were saying earlier the change over time period is really pivotal to building the new era and all of the rise of abilities and recognition and, and and there will be perhaps more of these Sandy Hook type of things a few more but every time one occurs the level of psychic sensitivity the level of savviness of people who in their pain begin to question and so someone like an Alec Jones who is known to be a fanatic in his own right let's mm -hmm. say this to be fair he can rant with the best of them <laughs> and that turns people off because people need to have things explained in a very methodical way and what the explanations are that uh, the the setup the orchestration behind the Sandy Hook slaughter. Uh, there's plenty of evidence for it. If anyone out there is interested in pursuing this, read John Rappaport, no more fake news dot com. Mm -hmm. His latest, uh, what was the latest one he was saying? Anyone read it? There was one that uh, Beagle sent that said that <coughs> there were a lot of uh, just too, too much to be coincidence. <coughs> oh yes, that's the one, the latest. And uh, it seemed like I, what I remember from it is that oh, the production manager was the, killed. The production manager was killed of the of the the Dark Knight film. The Dark Knight mm. film. He was the production manager, and he pointed out, set the whole setup so that Sandy Hook would be pointed out of one hour and fifty some odd minutes into the film. Into the film, yeah. And then he was. <coughs> deceased uh, in an automobile accident in April before the, 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 the Dark Knight massacre and then of course of course before the, the Connecticut massacre. Now for people to put all these things together is a stretch. <laughs> yes, thank you Nan. It's a stretch but it's also the beginning of multi-dimensional thinking. Mm -hmm. Meaning, some people would say, oh, it's total conspiracy. Well, first of all, it's not conspiracy. It's reality. And when things start adding up, what are you supposed to do? Pretend they don't? Mm -hmm. Investigation, real investigation, whether it's whether through law enforcement or investigative journalism, is to l get all the ducks out there and look at their feathers, look at their feet, their bills, the whole thing, and, and, and report what's there. But of course, as you well know, there are so many um, cover-ups and, and, and uh, clubs behind the scenes. We use the term clubs in quotes. Uh, so that many people are compromised, many people sell out. And this starts uh, down from the food taster all the way up to the Supreme Court, if you get the picture. You follow this? Anyone can be purchased and, and manipulated because it has to do with the person, the individual moral integrity. and what the kind of road it is that they choose. So, all of this is, uh, let's say, important. One could say that the children, such sweet children, 
took on the group death to raise the issue, to create polarizing, uni unifying events, to create, to create a wedge in the splitting of the worlds. The Illuminates want to confiscate weapons. And if you look at it from the higher, from another picture of reality, uh, to confiscate weapons or to have people turn in weapons, uh, if you could become an, a society that really focuses and imagines peace and really can, can get to peace, it is wonderful. Mm -hmm. But we would say this, you will not be able to achieve real peace in any dimension of reality if you are devoid or if you have abdicated any of your abilities. And by abilities we are referring to in the human body your psychic abilities. Because if authorities ask you or pay you and support you to turn in your weapons, then a psychically astute civilization would unify in that act because they could not be deceived. You understand? Mm -hmm. And that is the necessity of what's happening in the now. Unfortunately, it is true that many of these very shocking dramatic events they have many purposes, so the Illuminates will, will leverage it to their own agendas through politics and things of this nature. Yet, the reverberations and the good that can come out of it is never limited and no one owns it. No one owns any particular event. And even the intentions of a particular event can be changed and added to over time, can be reimagined, can be refortified. In some cases, they can be redone. We know in the movies they can create a facsimile where things are rerun and realities are, are, are redecided. Remember that great movie that's coming up for its anniversary there? Uh, Groundhog. Groundhog. We were going to say possum, it's Groundhog, yes. And that, that also exemplified what? Multidimensionality and probabilities. Mm -hmm. All right, we know the beep is beeped. And uh, we have probably another minute or something of commentary. But rather than do commentary, let's play the harmonica together. Okay. Let's play for some multidimensional tune-ups. Mm -hmm. And so that this... this uh, understanding of reality becomes normal. Let's play for a new strength and stability in the new era that is supported by common sense and psychic abilities, great compassion, great healing, fantastic food, and people with open hearts. Trust yourselves, dear friends, to build the new world. <laughs> 